Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us today. We are back at the front porch. I'm Sean Evans with the Chatham County Public Information Office, here with my boss, Director of Communications for the County, Catherine Glasby. And we also have two very special guests with us, Ann Robinson, Director of the Front Porch, and Shaughnessy Cargill, Family Engagement and Activities Coordinator. Yes. Got that right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank Love you it. both so much for being <laughs> here with us. Two very uh, critical components of what makes this place so effective. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to start with you. Uh, for those who may not know, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became director here at the Front Porch. Sure. Um, well, I come from a large family. I have five brothers and sisters. I was an army brat, okay. so we moved around a lot. Mm -hmm. We've lived everywhere from Fort Knox, Kentucky to Kaiserslautern, Germany. Wow. But I remember really specifically, and as it relates to being the director for this job, um, where I spent my youth, my teen years, was um, in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And that was in the early, early to mid-90s. And Phoenix, Arizona, <clears throat> during that time, um, you know, everybody thinks about Arizona as being like the Grand Canyon and a great place to travel and flag stuff, mm -hmm. and it is, but then there's sort of this other side of, of Arizona where it's very difficult, I think, to raise children, especially at that time, because gangs were very ramp rampant during that time. Mm -hmm. um, we had a methamphetamine crisis that was just absolutely taking over. Um, there were large sort of industrial sized high schools where, you know, two to 3,000 children went at, at a time. And so this is sort of during the latchkey kid, you mm -hmm. know, phase. And that's what we were, my brothers and sisters and I. My parents were very, very busy. And so all of that combined, I think, um, you know, made it easy to feel very invisible, you know, as a teen, as a youth. And that's just sort of the mixture that it, that it takes to create sort of a troubled teen mm -hmm. scenario. And that's exactly what happened with me. I was a very troubled teen. I had troubles with, current, with truancy. Um, I had issues um, with addiction. Um, I pretty much drove my parents nuts <laughs> mm -hmm. um, until I got to college. And my senior year, I met some teachers who were just so encouraging. Instead of focusing on what a knucklehead I was being, they wanted to focus on you know, what I did well. And um, that's really the, some of the components of the front porch that I think are the most successful is that, I, you know, I did get into counseling. I did start doing pro-social activities, theater, things like that, mm -hmm. that got me out of that crowd yeah. and into something just extremely positive and um, confidence building. And so when I see children, um, youth that are, you know, in their teens come through that door um, and they're, they're struggling, I think that's, that, that's me <laughs> when I was, you know, 15, 16 years old. Yeah. And I wish that a program like the Front Porch would have been available to me at that time. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, went to college, got involved in um, social work and, and sociology. I've done a lot of work with um, nonprofit organizations, really specifically development, um, really um, want to make sure that good people who do good work get the money they need to, for their programmings. Mm -hmm. um, and so had been doing some um, consulting for a while and then saw this job come up and applied and interviewed about four times. <laughs> and um, thankfully got the position because it really has been one of the most rewarding, fulfilling positions I've ever had. And Shaughnessy, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became a part of the Front Porch team. It was for the money, right? A lot of money. Yeah. They made a huge offer, five figures. I don't want to give away. Don't want to brag. Yeah, I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> Great name, by the way. Mine's fancier than yours. It is. Yours is uh, it takes it up a notch. But thank version. you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely not money related. I've done social services now for a while mm. and enjoyed them. In particular, this job was nice because it was able to work with some kids and populations that I had maybe worked with before in foster care, big brothers, big sisters, even teaching in schools. Mm -hmm but a way to do it a little bit differently, to come at it from a little different angle, still have some tangible direct you know, interactions with kids, but also be able to do it from a little more macro, mm -hmm. to be able to set up like some structures and some systemic things that can hopefully you know, join the pre-existing mission of the front porch to keep kids away from that next step that could happen, like juvenile court and then adult court and kind of that whole thing. Right. So being able to try to interfere with that was felt similar to what I'd done before, but also this is a different way of doing it. Mm -hmm. 
and um, and then the money. Yeah. <laughs> Joking, just kidding. <laughs> so casting a wider net, basically, and being more effective that way. Yeah, I think part of that for me, my mindset changed a little bit because of going back to school, getting a a master's in social work, mm -hmm. kind of seeing a little bit more of a long-term effect that could happen from some of the more systemic things and, uh, and the pandemic. Yeah. Kind of going through that took a whole different approach mm. for me and, and for obviously many people of like, all right, here's what I've been doing. Maybe that's been working well, mm. but now this whole thing's happened. So what can help with this and maybe more long-term in general? Right. And so I think the front porch just has that really unique view and obviously fairly unique because there's only a handful mm -hmm. of these type of agencies around the country. 80. 80? Mm -hmm. Is that what it is total? Okay. Wow. Wow. And, and that's grown over the years. Obviously it's becoming more popular but you mm -hmm. would think with the need to redirect kids and families and just give them the resources they may not know about, you right. would hope that it would be in every county, you know, everywhere. So, mm -hmm. so this is a neat thing to be involved in and yeah. money. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in part one of our podcast, we talked to Judge Colbert, and she she put it best. She just said the whole reason that front porch exists is to keep kids out of the juvenile court system. Mm -hmm. And thinking along those lines, tell us kind of what is the process for kids getting involved with front porch? When I think about that process, I think about... Um, I think about an album, actually, um, Lauren Hill's um, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Uh, I don't know if I would have been able to get out of high school or get through high school without that album. And one of her songs, she says, I wrote these words for everyone who struggles in their youth. And when I think about the front porch, I think these walls were made for everyone who struggles in their youth. So mm -hmm. children that are struggling, um, whether it be with depression, addiction, um, getting in, maybe involved in, in, in the wrong crowd, or just maybe losing direction um, can be referred to the front porch. And they can be referred to the front porch by many different agencies. It can be law enforcement. It can be social service agencies. It can be schools. Um, the parents themselves, mm -hmm. actually, um, the parents are our second highest referrers to the front porch right after the school system. Mm. So they can refer their children to the front porch. And from there, what happens is um, they get assigned to a case manager. The case manager sits down with the parent and the child and has um, conducts an assessment with them. And they look for um, all sorts of um, po you know, potential challenges. Like, is it, is it something where you know, the child needs counseling? Mm -hmm. um, is it a basic human need? If it's mm -hmm. a basic human need, we have a, um, a clothing closet and we have a um, food pantry mm -hmm. on site. We also have, thanks to Shelter from the Rain, a diaper bank mm -hmm. on site okay. as well. Um, and then we also look at pro-social activities too, which are really important. So we consider what the child is interested in, maybe art, sports, mm -hmm. writing, anything um, you know that that sparks their interest we try to make a link in the community for that child mm -hmm. to be involved in so when we're done with the assessment we come back together as a group um, and we talk about all these subject matter experts it's so cool it's such a great model um, we have or you know organizations that join us in our staffings um, like DFACS and Savannah Chatham County Public School System and uh, Gateway and you know numerous nonprofit organizations. Theros Place just joined mm -hmm. the team, mm -hmm. so we have all of these different perspectives, um, subject matter experts, and they know about different resources in the community that right. other people don't know about. So you have this wealth of information, and you say, "This is the situation with this this child, and this is what they're interested in. Um, this is based on the assessment. This is what um, you know I'm seeing." Um, the child, you know, is lacking, how can we fill in the gaps here? And not just the case manager, but the whole team comes together to um, make suggestions about where that child can be linked to, where they can be referred to. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. But we also involve the parent in that. So we get these sort of suggestions together, and then we approach the parent 
what do you think you can handle? You don't want to overserve sure. either because parents are doing the double. They've got a lot going on, and you don't want to mount up all of these, you know, um, mm -hmm. extra responsibilities. We go over with them what you know potentially is out there for the child, and they select, you know, um, what you know counselors they want to see, what pro social agencies they want to be involved with with the child. And then we don't just leave it there. It's not just an assessment and referral center. We also follow up um, and help parents get through the red tape of bureaucracy, um, you know, calling the, um, uh, the counselors and setting up the appointments. Um, we do check-ins to make sure that they are attending the counseling services. If they're not, you know, sometimes you can get matched with a counselor that's just you know, not your jam, you mm -hmm. know, and you have to search, you have to go on a search. So we see if that, if that connection has been made for the child and the mm -hmm. counselor. If not, we try to um, set them up with a different counselor. Yeah. So we do this for 90 days um, where we're just checking to see if they're following up on, um, on the, the referrals. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's, it really is it's such, just such a group team effort that includes the parents and the child and the subject matter experts. And you said something at the very beginning that kind of sparked a memory for me. You said that parents can come to you when they have a child. They can refer their own child. Yes. And I recently read an article, uh, it was a local article, where it was, uh, it was about 911 and um, emergency services. And Emergency services had been called because a parent was just at their wits end about what could be done to help their child yeah. because their child was just not on the right path. Well, where that is not necessarily the most appropriate use of sources of resources, the referral to you for that would be amazing. Yeah, um, and I think that's that's something that. I know you guys are making an impact in the community as far as getting out there how to, to get to your resources, um, but I think we might be able to help that a little bit more uh, through some of our marketing as well. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to that. You just you just gave me a whole new line of Wonderful. way of thinking. <laughs> Setting so, yourself up yeah, for Yeah, you're setting <laughs> yourself up for something here. Um, Shaughnessy, i got to ask you, I have two questions for you, actually, mm, okay. okay? One. I gotta compliment you on the shirt because I have a little bit of ADD going on here, is that a, and affecting? and yeah. so you know I'm sitting here going, what kind of animal is that? And I was like, oh, that's oh, they, a rhinoceros. And I was dinosaur. like, no, they're dinosaurs. They're dinosaurs. That is yeah. so very cool. So, you, so your first question was, what animal is? On yes, the shirt? It's a that dinosaur. was yeah. Yeah. dinosaurs. Yeah, dinosaur. That's that's very awesome. But no, seriously, <laughs> um, you know when when we're talking about programs under your purview. Tell us what, what it is that those programs are and how you're, how you're getting them out there. Well, to follow up a little bit, the case managers that Ann was just alluding to that mm -hmm. are doing these assessments, doing the interviews, those are the people doing the Lord's work, and especially because they already have all this other experience. So when you have two of the case managers who have like over 30 years combined working in juvenile court, Mm -hmm. And now they come here, and so now they're doing the interview with the family and the kids, and so they can pick up on things that are being said or not being said sure. mm -hmm. to say, okay, I've seen this before. Yeah. Yep. The kid doesn't have to be like right on the doorstep of entering juvenile court. It can just be way before that. Right. Like here's a small issue even. Sure. Like parents should refer them for even small things that they think could be happening. Yes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just yeah. have to be, oh, the grades are bad and their mental health looks, you know, those obviously we want to talk to, but... Mm -hmm. So now the, these case managers with all this experience or having the experience with defects and having the experience with the social worker in a school for 30 some years, yes. like these people are so experienced to be able to look at those little warning signs and the bigger warning and signs. And they haven't lost their passion either. Right. Yeah, it's a they really- They genuinely care about these kids. We have the best staff. That, that has been a really encouraging part to see like, oh my goodness, when we sit in, in these meetings, I'm not doing anything in the meeting. I'm just like listening to them and occasionally being like, oh, uh, should I look for this or can I help find this? But they've already got all these plans mm -hmm. and all these warning signs and how to tackle it. So they're, they're doing the work, like incredible work. Well, Shaughnessy, you, you said there and listed a few of the, the major warning signs or, or things that would really kind of trigger alarm bells, the, the grades, the mental health. Can you, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, mm -hmm. list a few of those smaller warning signs that parents might 
need to look out for or pick up on? There was a parent that actually called, and I just happened to answer the phone, you know, front porch, and they're saying, um, how, do, how does this referral process work? Because I heard about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, well, here's how it works. We, we send it to you, you fill it out, we call you back, whatever. And she just mentioned, the mom just mentioned, that they're just really isolated. Hmm. That was it. I felt like they need to do more socially. That's not the call that I would usually think would come in. It would be someone mm -hmm. saying they got kicked out of school and the school says they can't come back until we get this done. Mm -hmm. Or they mentioned something around suicide. Those mm -hmm. are the big ones. Right. But she just mentioned, like, they're just really isolated recently. Great. Mm -hmm. Because that could just be we're isolated for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Something happened. We yeah. kind of got down about it. And you right. just kind of... Working through it. Yeah. yeah. Or mm -hmm. this is a pattern that starts to develop that like, well, they'll get over it. Well, they're just a teenager. Well, they just got to college and it could go for several years. So that was like that mm -hmm. small thing that felt like, no, no, mm -hmm. no. I'm so glad she called and hopefully she follows up with this and brings the child in, even if sure. she just thinks it's something small. Because that isolation thing could be a huge part. To me, it always stood out, even when I was teaching in a like private school where you think, well, most of the kids come from pretty well off and mm -hmm. there's not a lot of the same issues we're facing in the public school, which was true. But one of the things that was really notable that would hit any kid was their ability to form relationships. Mm -hmm. So the kids who weren't necessarily getting in fights every day but were super selfish in the private school mm -hmm. and super kind of obsessed with themselves, that was still a really bad relationship dynamic that was going to affect friendships and romantic partner and whatever the next right. step took yeah. mm -hmm. and could easily turn to something else sure. and it wouldn't have been focused on because they weren't in a certain class where you'd say it is high risk mm. so these ability to form relationships in a healthy way no matter what they are mm -hmm. if a parent or someone started to see this person just kind of has an e this ego that's out of control or maybe they are a little narcissistic or they're so isolated or they push people away that would be notable but you wouldn't think oh juvenile right. so I think because our agency does have that juvenile court component that could scare some people away like oh we don't need that mm -hmm. my kids not about to go to jail right mm -hmm. but there could be these other little things that yeah. eventually could lead there or they're just forming relationship patterns that are not going to be helpful so let's let's have them talk to someone who's been in the school system for 30 years or someone who's seen mm -hmm. what happens when kids go into foster care and knows those trends and can kind of interfere mm -hmm. with it. Like that's amazing. I don't even know what question yeah. you said. No, that was fantastic. <laughs> I think you oh, no, you yeah. touched on all the points uh, <laughs> there with the smaller signs. And I think a lot of uh, parents, yeah, like you said, signs. might be scared away by the juvenile court component of this place. But that could sound really intimidating. Exactly, exactly. But you offer so much more that right. addresses issues even before they reach that stage. And and you made uh, a very great point there. So, okay. Thank oh, okay. You, you right. did. Well, you did. Good. It's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I do want to ask, last year you had a 30% increase in mental health referrals. I'm sure a lot of that probably stemming from the pandemic. Um, also a 27% jump in youth assessments and above 90% positive feedback from youth and caregiver surveys. What do you attribute that to? I attribute any growth, um, really any success that this organization has, again, to our staff. They're phenomenal, and they genuinely care um, about the children um, that walk through these doors. And um, they care about the job that they do. They care about the quality yeah. of, of work um, that they produce. So I was very fortunate to walk into that, extremely fortunate. Um, I also think there have been some operational changes that have, that have sort of helped us reach out to more families. Um, and, you know, part of the model of, of a mark is to have constant evaluation to constantly being taking surveys and we just started our survey process in November you heard Judge Cole and, and Judge Formey talk about data and we're really in the beginning stages of collecting the data mm -hmm. um, and so in November we started a, um, a, a survey process where we would survey um, parents and children right at the point that they had their assessment mm -hmm. 60 days in and then a year out so that 90% really comes from that immediate right at the point, and we're, we're still waiting on um, more um, responses, um, and, which is great because that model allows us to improve on things that we need to pr improve on and also focus resources where they need to be focused, mm -hmm. right? So that's, that, that's what that constant data will tell us. It's, these models are just it's constant evaluation, which I, I think is, is great. Um, 
but as far as you know, um, the amount of, of folks that we've been able to see, I also think that there have been changes in the operations in the sense that um, some of us are willing to go out to the to the houses of, of, of our um, parents and conduct the assessments there. We know in Savannah transportation is a huge issue for a lot of people. Right. Well, our model too says meet the parent. This is mm -hmm. going to be at the convenience of the parents. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we've done to make things more convenient for our parents is we have changed our hours on Wednesdays and Thursdays mm -hmm. to 7 p.m. So whereas before you would call a parent and want them to come in for um, an assessment with their child and there was only this short period of time you know after school and before five mm -hmm. that they could get here mm -hmm. um, we have more opportunities for them to come and we are actually doing more pro-social activities during those times too so um, we're using the building we're actually becoming a pro-social uh, provider ourselves at the front porch so I'm almost gonna grow outside these walls uh, yeah. at some point but that's yeah. a good thing yeah it's a good yeah. problem yeah well, I don't want to be Taking all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, this this Shaughnessy is really more directed to you, but I think both of you might want to jump in and, and a answer this. What are some of the initiatives that you're looking forward to in the near future, and how are they going to impact our community? A initiative mm -hmm. that I could see happening um, has not even been fully realized yet in okay. that. So when we sit down weekly and have these staffings and look at different kids and you have, again, all these incredible professionals who have so mm -hmm. much history and rich experience in the area. Mm -hmm. And they'll just start to mention here, some of the kids going through. And I, I wonder if there's this out there, you know, mm -hmm. I know what we usually refer to, we refer for this and this and this, but so for instance, one of our case managers, Stephanie, about a month ago was like, um, it'd be really great if we had this summer camp. Something about mm -hmm. summer camp, this kid could use it. I'm not sure what's available. Maybe we should figure that out. Oh, well, what if we just got all of them together and did a cookout in our front you know, lawn of the mm -hmm. front porch and mm -hmm. just invited families to come out? Oh, okay, all right, so three weeks later, that's what we did last night. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty exciting. That was kind of fun to do. That was also a very tangible thing that could hopefully benefit a lot of families. Right. Yeah. Because now here's all these options. I don't have to go find them and search them out and get there to it. I can get to one place, hopefully get my kids signed up. So the dilemma of, oh no, what do I do? Mm -hmm. How do I afford it? Doesn't hit quite as hard. Mm -hmm. That free time that a kid would have to maybe do a lot of things, maybe get in trouble, hopefully doesn't hit quite as hard. Right. So part of what I'm looking forward to is just that. Yeah. Every week, what is it that the kid needs? What is it the family saying they need? What are we aware of? What are we not sure of? You know, one of those that came up a couple weeks ago was in an assessment, with this 15 year I think 15 or 16 year old girl, when they were asking her, what do you like to do? Most kids that I hear, it's like, you know, I like to be on my phone, I like to be with my friends, go to the sure. mall, be on my phone, be on my phone, <laughs> be on my phone maybe, or use my phone. So a phone? <laughs> Perhaps a phone, okay. something about a phone. About a phone. I don't even yeah. know what that means, yeah. this phone thing. Uh, it's hard to say. Hard, yeah, <laughs> but this was like, I like to do this and spend time with elderly. Well, that's a really interesting thing to pop out. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, are there any mentoring programs for elderly and kids? Well, there actually is one. It's like two miles from us. And so, okay, well, let's go visit there. And how do we get set up with that? And yeah. should, mm -hmm. could we be a host site for people to come and mentor kids? Or should we refer them? Or right. Okay, yeah. so let's look into just things around us that we can connect kids to. Exactly. So. And we really have taken advantage of that. Um, you know, um, whenever a child um, voices any interest in any, in any topic, um, whether or not there's a direct line or a, a direct agency for that child, we try to at least um, introduce that child to somebody that's experienced in that area. Um, for instance, if we have children that are interested in art, we refer them um, to Tiffany Taylor or Brian McGregor, um, who are well-established artists in Savannah mm -hmm. and can tell them their story mm -hmm. about um, about how they made it in the art world. And, and they go to visit them, they visit them at their... Um, galleries. Um, Brian McGregor usually shows them um, some of his pieces and then the children show him their pieces and he's encouraging and motivating. So we really try to use as, um, use as, as many community resources as possible, not just social service agencies, mm -hmm. um, but you know if, if somebody's interested in cooking, uh, maybe you know they could meet you know Mashama Bailey, you know, if I somebody's I love that. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Um, Savannah's just such a unique um, 
an interesting and giving mm -hmm. city, giving of their time and, and resources. And we being able to find those people out there in the community that are like, hey, absolutely, come bring this child here. We'll let them know, you know, what our story is and how their, you know, sort of trajectory could, could match ours. Yeah. It's really wonderful. And we've had a really great response just from individuals, not just, you know, agencies yeah. uh, in the community. So it's all really been about, you know, keeping an open mind mm -hmm. and, um, and, and trusting. I, I feel like this staff knows what they're talking about. And I feel like in a lot of workplaces, maybe some of the tension comes from people in an administrative position not understanding that people know what they're doing mm. and trusting that. Mm -hmm. And um, my favorite word to say, you know, at the front porch is, let's try it. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. You know, let's give it a shot. Um, and I think a lot of our, 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 the best of our programming has come out of staff ideas and staff initiatives. Because mm -hmm. they know. Right. They've been there. Yeah. So. Yeah. They're your experts. Yep. And, yeah. and I think, oh, yeah. too, that, you know, they're probably a part of what your key success is here. Absolutely. Is, is their knowledge, their experiences, and their willingness to go outside the box. Yeah. I mean, I, that's what I'm hearing here, uh -huh. is that you guys aren't afraid to try something to help a kid. This is an ex this whole model is sort of a new experimental model, and it's very that's a really exciting aspect of it um, for the whole country. So why not follow in that sort of um, adventurous um, spirit when it mm -hmm. comes to programming? Yeah, it's worked out for us so far. Well, so. And not to take away from one of your questions, but it sounds yeah. like that's a, a key to the success of the mm -hmm. front porch and growth over, mm -hmm. over the next few years, right? Absolutely. It's being able to engage and use those community partners and then bounce ideas off of each other. Right. Because things that, that have been used in the past, like Scared Straight, those types of programs, over time, it's shown that they haven't worked. It's not effective. It's not effective to be punitive with a child. Mm -hmm. It's effective to listen and, again, focus on... Um, what makes that child feel confident and valued. And that's what this program is really all about. Very good. Well, I'd say we're reaching the end of our list yes. of questions. You guys yes. have been great. Uh, we do want to start um, letting folks know more about you. What would you want to tell folks who see this? Um, what would you want them to know about the Front Porch and all of the services you provide? Just kind of wrapping it all back together for them to know. Sure. We need a step team leader. <laughs> Explain. Okay. Go ahead. Well, you obviously know what a step team is. Like dance? Yeah, there you go. Like dance I have slash zero marching. coordination, so that's not going to yeah, be You're not going to be our person. Never mind. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll we do a need, there's, a, there's been a step team here in the past, and it was volunteer led, and mm -hmm. we, we need to resurrect that. Mm -hmm. So that's just like a general thing. Okay. That's mm -hmm. a program, pro-social activity that can happen here. We've actually gotten grant funding for the formation of the step team. Really? So we just, we need a leader now. We need the leaders. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not that person. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not the leader you <laughs> seek. I can't do that stuff. We, Too we need that. Too leffy, yeah. 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 It, it, speaking of which, I think funding is, funding is so important. You know, initially we started out a couple of years ago with only having one funding source, um, which was the, the blueprint from the county, which mm -hmm. was incredible, provided us with so much. And then we made so much leverage through those partners that Judge Colbert and Judge Formey were talking about. There's so much leverage out of this. We leverage about $724,000 out of a $260,000 investment. So if you want to see your tax dollars working um, at their optimal, I think that's another, um, you know, sort of a business case for the front porch as well. Mm -hmm. But recently, we did get another grant from um, State DFACS um, for Family Resource Center, and that's actually how we hired Shaughnessy and another one of our case managers. So funding mm -hmm. is extremely important, and we've been really looking into that, and people have been very, very... Um, receptive to funding our organization. So, um, you know, coming here with, with grant writing experience and fundraising experience was helpful in that sense um, because we're finding foundations and government organizations that are like, heck yeah, let's try that, let's do that. So, yeah. we're excited about that aspect. Excellent. Well, and how can folks find out more about you? Contact info, location, phone number, website, any of that. How, what's the best way? Um, just look for Shaughnessy. <laughs> <laughs> just 
gonna ride around town on a bike with a bullhorn. Yeah. No, yeah. So far, yeah. we're gonna get him a wrap around, maybe a little clown car. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. whatever. Well, a car would be nice. Effective yeah. advertising. Yeah. I like that. It's different outside the box. <laughs> we are located at two two zero three Abercorn. Mm -hmm. Um, our phone number is 912-652-6555. Uh, we are online um, with a, our website at um, thefrontporch.org. We have a Instagram <laughs> account, um, the Front Porch CC, at the Front Porch CC. And then our Facebook account is uh, TFP. Um, Chatham, I believe. Okay. You'll we'll put all other the front porches. So yes, yeah, we'll we'll have oh, the yeah. information. We're the one that's the not a board. comedy troupe, or a coffee shop, or so an acupuncture center, or an acupuncture center. <laughs> <laughs> the front porch, Savannah. You can definitely Google that and find. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Well, and it's right here on the main drag on Abercorn, mid Savannah. So easy for folks to get to along a couple of transportation routes as well. And we're open during the summertime so we need families mm -hmm. social workers pastors grandparents whoever it is to say oh you know what this kid is struggling in whatever area it is let's make that referral don't you have to wait for the school year okay. we're still here in the summertime right so. gotcha. and our slogan is where youth and families gather and we love it when youth and families gather here yeah wow Shaughnessy, and thank you both so much for being here with us today, giving us some of your time to explain the great work that y'all are doing here at the Front Porch in Savannah and Chatham County. All right, well, that will do it for this installment of the Chat Podcast. On behalf of myself, Sean Evans, Catherine Glaspie with the Public Information Office, thank you so much for being here with us. Join us next time.